Hey y'all, wanted to talk to you today about how you take care of your dogs in an RV. Because you got a lot of confined space there and there's not a lot of room. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to let your dogs dominate you and get in your lap and make your lap their bed. You don't want to do anything special. You don't want to spoil them because if you spoil them, it's hard to live with them in that small confined space. So I want to have a serious talk about that. If you'll, if you'll just listen to me, I'm going to tell you right now. You don't want to have a toys and toy box. You don't have room for that nonsense. You don't want to have special water and food dishes because your, dog, your pets don't need all of that to be happy. So I just want you to know you are in control. Watch, I'm going to watch this. Bentley, sit. Bentley, you just, see? That's what I'm saying right there. You are the master. Don't forget it. Hey, you could be larger than life. Okay, so guess what, y'all? Uh, we're at Home Depot, and we came up here to get those 20 by 20 pavers for our umbrella. So we're gonna get the pavers in here and a whole bunch of other stuff because, and we don't even know what, because it's Home Depot. So when you go in there, you just start buying stuff. So we're gonna go get our pavers, head home, and get this umbrella going. Okay, hey, y'all. So we were supposed to get 20 by 20s, right? And we couldn't, we got 16 by 16, which is okay because look what we're gonna do. These here, these here are gonna go on the front strip, going across the front. You'll see when we get there. But we fi figured out a way, since the, the panels don't fill it up completely, we will, um, we will make our own trim. So I'll show you later. <laughs> of wearing gloves. Wear gloves, save your fingers. These are heavy and I could hurt myself and I refuse to do that. As a matter of fact, I have a pair of gloves for Donna. And what I'm thinking is I might film her putting these in the truck. by 16 pure concrete pre-game prep today for our uh, game tomorrow. We're looking forward to the Chiefs winning, woohoo! Anyway, I'm making candied apples. Now, I don't know why, it's not really a game day food, I get it, but I've been craving candied apples. You ever just, you know, like funnel cakes, corn dogs, you know, the things that you get out at those events? Like I really miss it, that we haven't had any of those kinds of events in, in over a year. And I don't know, I'm just really hungry for candied apples. And I thought, I can do this. So today we are ready. We have our Granny Smith apples. They've been washed, dried, sticks put in them uh, to this pot. And it's a very simple recipe. We'll put it down below for you guys. I'm going to add two cups of sugar We've got one cup of corn syrup. That's my favorite right there. Get that in there. <laughs> and a cup of hot water. How hot is that water? I heated it in the microwave for just a couple of minutes. It doesn't have to be boiling. Honestly, I don't even know why it needs hot water. I'm guessing it'll melt the sugar a little quicker. Either way, it works. So we got a cup of hot water, two cups of sugar, and a cup of corn syrup. We're gonna stir this over medium heat until the sugar dissolves. So now that we've got the sugar dissolved, 
we're going to stop stirring and we're going to add our candy thermometer. Now, this is something you can purchase at any store. It's got a little ball on the side with a clip so you can put it on the pan and it's adjustable. And the reason it's adjustable is because when you put it in the pan, you don't want this part to touch the bottom of the pan or you'll get an incorrect reading on your, your, your sugar. So we're gonna clip it to the side of the pan. Donna, where, where should that, that little tip be? Can it be close to the bottom or? Well, I wanna be able to see my temperature, but I don't want it, I want it to be in the syrup, but not touching the bottom of the pan. So that's about good, right there. Now, we're going to let this bubble and boil on medium heat. Um, until it reaches a uh, hard boil, which is about 285 to 300 degrees. So that's what we're looking for. And then if you want, um, you can, with a little water, you can brush down the sides of the pan while it's cooking. And what that's gonna do is it's going to dissolve the sugar that crystallizes on the outside. Cause you don't wanna stir it or disturb it. You want it to get to that 300 degrees. So on my sheet pan, I put down one of those sill pats so that the apples won't stick to it. But you could also use aluminum foil or parchment paper. You just want to spray it down with oil because when this comes out, it's going to be super sticky and you're not going to get another chance to not have it stick. Um, also today in the ingredients, we're doing cinnamon candied apples, right? So that's our flavoring and I've got this is cinnamon oil. So not to be confused with cinnamon essence. Anyway, it's a food grade cinnamon oil. You're probably gonna have to go to a specialty food store, Michael's, uh, some craft store, somebody who carries a really nice line of cake decorating supplies to get your cinnamon oil. We're only gonna need an eighth of a teaspoon of this you're gonna need a little bit, bit of red food coloring because it wouldn't be cinnamon candied apples if they weren't red. So the Red Hots are in addition to the cinnamon oil. You could do either or if you can't find one or the other, the cinnamon oil or the Red Hots would probably work just fine. What other uses would you have for cinnamon oil if it wasn't food grade? Would you use it as some kind of a lubricant because I've told Carl that he can no longer talk because he asks really dumb questions. We're at 250. So I've got like an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon oil, which I'm gonna add right now. And we're gonna add our cinnamon red hot. And we wanna melt those down. That's gonna drop your temperature a little bit, right? So you wanna get those Red Hot's melted in there, and then make sure you get it back up to 300 degrees. Okay, we're a little above 300, so I'm gonna turn it down. I'm actually probably gonna turn the heat off and add some food coloring. All right, so let's take the thermometer out, get it out of our way. Be very careful where you put that because it's super hot. Now we're gonna, uh oh, I dripped on my, you don't wanna touch that, it would burn you really, really bad. So I'm gonna put in a few drops of red food coloring. Turn the heat off. Okay. Now, we're gonna stir and we're gonna mix it until it's a nice smooth color and consistency. All right, that looks beautiful, guys. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna start dipping our apples. 
Make sure you don't touch any of this stuff because it will burn you really, really bad. So I've got a hot pad holder. I'm dipping the pan over to the side so I can get my apple in there. You're just gonna spin the apple. Oh, look at that! How beautiful is that? Let it run off for just a second and then sit it down over there. You know what, guys? I want it to be redder, so I'm gonna add a few more drops of red food coloring right now. Okay, and we're gonna stir that in. Okay, it's hard to tell in the pan what the color consistency is, but once I dip the apple, I could tell that I really want it to be redder. Okay, that looks a little better. I would say that's probably about 10 drops of red food coloring at this point. Okay. Do you know how many guys are watching this right now wishing their car had that kind of paint job on it? <laughs> Only you would think about that right now. <laughs> Ooh, that does look a lot better, doesn't it? Yeah, it's better. All right, and then sit it down. Now, I don't know if we're gonna have enough to do all of these apples, but we will do as many as we can. You just wanna let it drain off a little bit. I kinda like it when, when there's um, some of that candy coating sitting at the bottom of the apple because it makes it nice and crunchy and yummy. You do want to make sure that your apples are good before you start the process. And um, after they cool, um, you can stick them in the refrigerator and they'll keep for about 24 hours, but you really wanna get them eaten within about 24 hours because the apple will start to deteriorate after that. Now this will form that hard, crispy outer crust of, on there, right? Yeah, that's why they're and called they're, candy apples. Right, and they're a little bit chewy, right? Like the, the crust is. No. The chewy. coating? No. A little gummy? No? No, hard, like like a hard candy. Crispus? Crispus? Yeah, that's a Dolly Parton song. Technical term for Dolly Parton song? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Stay with me. All right, well, there you go, guys. Look at that. It's okay, you guys, for my first attempt at candy making, hard candy making. Um, it came out pretty good. I will probably try it again. I wish they were a little redder. It's not gonna change the taste though. But um, there's our candied apples. I'm very, I'm very happy we did this and uh, I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow and, and sharing my apples with everybody. So don't forget to push that thumbs up button and like. Uh, hit subscribe so that you know when we're putting out more videos, which is every Sunday. Share with your friends, because the more the merrier. And we'll see you guys next week. You rolling? Okay, hey y'all. I wanted to, wanted to talk to you today about a very important subject.